there! Today we'll have a project video. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm an oscilloscope fan. This channel started with the idea of showing Arduino and other electronics projects, but soon became a test equipment review channel. But I still want to go back to the original idea of making more projects in the channel, and today I have one that will do both. I will review a oscilloscope PC software while presenting to you my SoundCard oscilloscope probe adapter. If you are only curious how an oscilloscope works, just want to test but don't have much use for it, probably this video is for you. If you didn't know, you can use your computer SoundCard as ADC for a software-based oscilloscope. While this is true, is also very dangerous for the health of your computer. The reason is, and since you will be testing voltage, you shouldn't pass more than 5 volts on your computer audio entry, risking burning your sound card. To help prevent this, I researched for solutions and created this probe adapter that will help you to analyze signals up to 30 volts and 44 kilohertz. This was the simplest design I found, it only has 8 components and works great. Credits should be given to who deserves it, and I brought this board to life, but the original idea belongs to Konstantinos Chortis from Greece and it is Creative Commons licensed. You should have the original schematics on the screen. This adapter will give you 2 channel support and a 3.5mm jack to connect to the PC. So, without further ado, let's start! Ok, and we have here the schematics. As you can see, it's a pretty simple uh, design. Only two L7805 voltage regulators. We have also some PCB connectors and resistors and a diode. Let's see the PCB design in here. And finally, we have the 3D design. As you can see, it's a very small board with uh, very few components. I think we are done here, so let's send this to PCBWay and create some professional boards. Ok, now that the schematics uh, are done, let's go to the PCBWay website and order PCBs. We have these $5 10 PCBs, awesome price. Ok, I want to do a quick order. Yeah. I already have my Gerber file in here, ready for upload. Yeah, awesome. So, I, I don't like green, let's do it in red. Yeah. Ok, so it has a pro processing time to, of 3 to 4 days and also I choose the AliExpress standard with EOS. If you are in Europe, this is very important because it will not stop at customs. So everything is ready, let's save the to cart and order this. So the PCB boards finally arrived, let's see what's on the box. Uh, this time I ordered box for several projects, not this one only. So yeah, let's see what we have in here. Ah, here it is. This is what we need. Ok, let's open the package and see the board. This is a small project, but it will protect your computer when using it. Yeah. A lot of boards and... Yeah, very nice. Very nice. It will allow you to connect to probes and yeah. Let's assemble this and see how it works. So I have here the board. When I ordered this board, I used the 51K201 BNC to PCB adapter. But what happened was that it has 10 millimeters, I think, something like that between holes. And the parts that I have here have 8 millimeters. I went to RS online to order these parts, but I noticed that it costs about $12 each, so never mind, I will correct this PCB in, uh, in the future. And right now we will do a little hack, so we can mount this on this PCB. Just break the, the legs, 
Yep, like this. And we want here a chip PCB. And what we need really is this part. I will, let me just insert here. Okay, like this. And I will solder to the ground to use the ground after. So yeah, let's grab the soldering iron and start working on this. I became a fan of the miniware. Yeah, this is great. So here it is, uh, as you can see it's a quite simple board, 8 components total, yeah, very easy to assemble, quite fast to assemble also. You have the white, the white wire connected to the channel 1, red wire connected, connected to channel 2, and you have this 3.5 millimeters jack to connect to the PC. Well, this should filter uh, the, the bursts in voltage uh, while connecting to the PC. Uh, but anyway, I will use this very cheap sound card. This is a USB uh, sound card that will not require drivers. It costs, I think, about 3 euros or something like that. It's very useful to have one in hand. And yeah, I will use this uh, instead of connecting directly to my PC. I have here uh, 3.5 extensions to well to be able to take this to my PC because it's under the desk and I will connect this also in here. So we have the setup ready. Let's test this. Okay, connecting the BNC cable and now connecting to my function generator. So now that we have the sound card oscilloscope probe adapter ready and connected to my function generator. The first thing we have to do is to download the sound card uh, oscilloscope. For that you have to go to zeitnitz.eu. I will leave the, the link on the description to, to be easier to, to access. I have some difficulty to say this. I'm sure my German friends will say this in a breeze. And yeah, after reaching this website, the Zitnit uh, website, we have here the sound card scope and the English page of this uh, software. On the, on the page you have here download the latest version, just press download and install this software. So now that I have the software installed, just run it, okay. This is not a free software, it's a, a software that you can use it if it's not in, well, in commercial use for learning, it should be okay. And what we have here, it's already running because I, I ran it before and I have the configuration already in place, but let's review it before uh, starting that. So let me increase this. The, the software is pretty simple. We have here the amplitude of the signal. This is the triggering area. You have here the triggering modes, the channel for triggering, rising or falling, the threshold, and obviously the auto set. As you can see, we have already in here um, a sine wave because I have my function generator uh, already producing one. This is the trigger level, yeah. And you have the normal run and stop. While stopped, you can save the waveform. The channel mode, this is identical or to the math functions, channel one plus channel two, minus and multiplied. You have also the measures. Uh, for example, you can activate the frequency and voltage in here and also do a log to a file. That's always useful. Let me 
disconnect this. We don't need for now the channel 2. This is the channel control. You can select the color for each channel and activate and deactivate the, the channel. And this is pretty much the, the usage. As you can see, we have the, here the amplitude and the time division for the oscilloscope. Let me increase this a little because we have space. Yeah, like this. Okay, better. And yeah, we have several functions. We have the XY modes. I'm only working with one channel, so no XY mode for us. And we have also a FFT. As you can see, this is the, the, the FFT window. Right now it, it doesn't seem much, but you can activate the DB. So you have here a better signal. You have a peak hold function, okay, to better read the, the results. You can zoom in, zoom out, and this is quite uh, quite complete uh, as a FFT. Also with a frequency filter, okay. We can even apply a low pass, for example, filters, high pass, and band pass, and band stop also. You you have a, a some some filters in here also, and yeah. Channel 1, channel 2, response, waterfall, channel 1. We have several functions in here. This is pretty complete, to be honest. I, I like very much this. Uh, if you want to see in logarithmic, you cannot use the DB, of, obviously. But yeah, here it is. So FFT also. We even have a function generator. Okay, you can connect the function generator using the output port. I will show you the, the configuration in a moment. It's the, this tab. So you can use channel 1 or channel 2 for uh, outputting a, a signal. We have extras for recording. You can record the, the audio and stuff like that. And you can configure here which sound card uh, will be used for output and also for input. In this case we are using the input auto enable. We can have several languages. Yeah, this is a pretty cool software. So in terms of the oscilloscope, we have the oscilloscope already generating uh, one kilo kilohertz sine wave with a 250 millivolts peak to peak and this is the the great limitation of this uh, adapter yeah the the voltage peak to peak it's quite slow i, I will try to fix uh, or get another version of this let me see what happens if we increase the the frequency okay we can take this to a maximum i believe of 44 megahertz, uh, kilohertz, as, a, as you can see in the screen, uh, yeah, it will not work the, the trouble. It, the signal will start to, to get really messy. So I think the limit to have a, a nice signal, it's like three kilohertz. Yeah. Let's try this with a square wave. Square wave, it's always difficult. Let's see what we can have in here. Yeah, right now we are with one kappa hertz, a square wave, also a triangle. And this one, it's the normal heart that I always do while testing uh, oscilloscopes. Let's see if we can get the, uh, the art uh, design in here. No, it will not be able. So as you can see, this is more a learning process than, uh, to be honest, uh, than really a, a, a usable oscilloscope. You can use it, for example, for Arduinos and projects like that. It will cost you something like five to ten bucks, or ten dollars or euros to to assemble all this. It's not much, but what it counts here, it's the learning experience and yeah, experimenting with the electronics. Yeah, this is fun, but th this is something that I was trying to experiment for a long time now. To wrap this up, this was a very fun project and easy to assemble. That said, the amplitude of the signal shouldn't pass the 250 millivolts peak to peak. 
if you want the waveform correctly drawn in this screen, you have also to be careful to not use voltage over 30 volts. So it's quite limited. The maximum frequency is also low, 44 kilohertz, and that isn't much. But this project was not about the destiny, but the road to get there. Meaning, it wasn't about the awesome specs, but more about the learning process, how to create one of these adapters and how to use it on your PC as an oscilloscope. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and all my viewers that have been using the affiliate access links on the screen before paying while shopping. That will help me to maintain this channel. Really appreciate your collaboration, so thank you. I hope that you learned something useful today. If you did, please slap that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell to activate all notifications and be the first one to know whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for your company and I hope to see you in my next video.